Hi everyone, it's Jen from Sunday Baubles, and today I'm going to take you through some of my tips and tricks to research my jewelry finds. By the end of this video, we'll cover some of the resources that I use, and I'll also share with you what I've paid and what I value this ring at. So this is what we're going to use is our example, um, and I am going to start by doing a visual inspection with you. So let's get a lot closer to it. Let's begin with a side view. The construction of this ring is very detailed. It has a large blue center stone, and the setting is an unusual warm shade of gold, and this is indicative of age and patina. The fabrication is clearly of high quality, and four sets of double prongs hold the stone in place. The side engraving is also particularly lovely. When you purchase a piece of jewelry, you often are given some information about it, perhaps materials, provenance, size information, even maker's information. It always makes sense to validate that information because errors can be made during the initial assessment process or during the listing process. What I did with this ring was take it to a jeweler that I know with an XRF machine. I didn't want to do a scratch test because of the detail work on the band, and they were able to confirm for me that it was indeed 14 karat gold. They also validated that it is indeed a blue zircon. Here you can see that the ring has a hallmark for 14 karat gold and a maker's mark that includes a W in the middle. Maker's marks are an excellent source of information about your jewelry. If your piece has a maker's mark on it and you're able to find that maker, you can often learn about when that maker worked, where they worked, and what materials they used. One of my absolute favorite sources for information on makers is Lang Antiques, Antique Jewelry University. Lang Antiques is a San Francisco-based antique jewelry dealer, and their website links to educational resources. To search for a maker, enter a descriptor. In order to search for the maker on my ring, I entered a W in Lang Antiques search bar. And after finding the results for W, I scrolled through until I found one that was a match. Much to my delight, I was able to find the maker. Trang and Waters, based in Vancouver, British Columbia, were the makers of this ring. They operated circa 1922. I was particularly excited about the result because it turns out that this ring has actually lived its last hundred years locally. I sourced it locally in Vancouver, British Columbia, and that is in fact where the jeweler was based. This image shows a collage of photographs that were taken circa 1920 and 1930s in Vancouver. You can barely make out the skyline that includes mountains, and then you see the beaches on the ocean as well. Now it's time to turn our attention to this dreamy blue stone. Verified as a blue zircon, this stone sparkles like a diamond and has some special properties. The easiest way to detect a zircon by eye alone is to look for the doubling of the facets, as it is birefringent. Zircons are not to be confused with cubic zirconia. A zircon is found in nature and earth mined, whereas a cubic zirconia is always lab created. It warrants a comparison side by side, so let's take a look at a chart that I made that shows diamond, zircon, and cubic zirconia. This chart shows the differences between a zircon, diamond, and cubic zirconia. We'll look at four categories, origin, composition, properties, and Mohs scale. In terms of origin, as you can see, cubic zirconia is the man-made option in the list. The composition differs between all three as well. A zircon is made of zirconium orthosilicate, a diamond of carbon, and a cubic zirconia of man-made zirconium dioxide. When we look at the properties of the zircon, diamond, and cubic zirconia, the dispersion and refraction are quite similar, and this is why all three of them have that coveted sparkle to them. And finally, on the Mohs scale of hardness, the diamond comes in at a 10, and it is the hardest. Cubic zirconia is next at an 8 to 8.5, and a zircon the softest at a 7.5. A zircon is still quite hard, but over decades of wear, you can begin to see the facets wear down. Zircons enjoyed great popularity in the early 20th century, and not just blue zircons. Zircons are available in many colors, and clear zircons, like this one, were sometimes used in engagement rings. Tiffany's gemologist. George Coons was an advocate for zircons. In fact, he adored them so much that he started a campaign to rename them Starlight. Alas, 
His campaign never really took off, and they are still known as Zircons. Let's take a moment to take a look at this colorless Zircon ring. Set in 14 karat white gold, it is also from the 1920s. This stone has a particularly unusual cut. Note the high crown, as is typically found with old European cut diamonds. And yet, if you look closely at the stone, you'll see a tiny table, and it also has an extra set of facets. This is known as a zircon cut. It's difficult to capture the facets of zircons on camera because of their birefringence. The easiest way to see the facet doubling is from the side. Now, I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't take a moment to show you a diamond next to a zircon. So let's take a look at an old cut European diamond next to that transparent zircon. The top right ring is our zircon and the bottom left is the diamond. Note that the diamond does exhibit more fire and scintillation, but the zircon certainly holds its own, exhibiting some of the same properties. Now let's get back to this blue beauty. Why did I buy it? Well, for starters, it spoke to me. I loved the vibrant blue color next to that gold. It wasn't your standard gold. As you see more pieces and handle more pieces, you'll get a lot more comfortable recognizing different eras. And I was fairly certain that this one was indeed an older piece. Now, it also helps when you have confidence in the jeweler or the seller that you're buying from. I love returning to the sellers that have done good by me in the past. And in this case, this local dealer has indeed sold me a few pieces. On top of all of this, there was of course the cost. I've been following Blue Zircon in the market for quite some time. Blue Zircon is one of my very favorite stones and the prices have been going up and up and up. The cost of this ring was $170 and I'm going to now share with you an app that I like to use, gem.app, to help me do some price shopping. Let's take a look and you can tell me in the comments if you think I got a fair deal. Gem.app is a service that aggregates results from marketplaces like Etsy, Ruby Lane, eBay, First Dibs, and many other jewelry websites. By clicking on any image, you'll be brought to that listing. I'll leave you with a word of advice about Gem.app. It is a fantastic tool to quickly scan the marketplace and get an idea of pricing, but it does include a combination of asking prices as well as starting bids. You'll always want to click through and understand what the listing is and also verify the listing details. This ring is something that I absolutely love and adore. It will be staying in my personal collection. And that is my top tip. Always buy what you love. And sometimes it's worth paying up for a piece if it really speaks to your heart and you know that you want to hang on to it. April is my birthday month. And if you're not already aware, I am doing a giveaway. I'll be giving away to three lucky winners a chance to join me live for a Let's Make a Deal event. And there are fabulous prizes, including a diamond ring. Take a look at the video, subscribe, and leave some comments in order to enter. And this video will count for one. So let me know what you think, what you would like to see next, or your favorite antique or vintage jewelry find. Have a great day. Until next time, I'll see you again soon.